What's up guys, it's Jimmy Design. So it's summertime now and I just recently completed a project where I designed a concept of a fan. If you guys follow me on my Instagram page, you guys have probably seen some of the concept renderings that I posted on there. So definitely check me out, the links should be down below in the description. So while designing this fan, I ended up building it in SolidWorks. A 3D model is gonna be so important when you are designing your concepts, your ideas, because it could really refine your concept giving it dimension and shape where you can rotate around and have geometry but also be able to 3d render it 3d print it so for this video guys I'm gonna show you how I built my 3d fan concept in SolidWorks SolidWorks is the main staple 3d program for industrial designers this video is gonna be extremely helpful to those designers who have just recently picked up SolidWorks know how to use the features in the program on a basic level but don't don't quite feel so comfortable with designing in it just yet. It's important to keep in mind before we begin building any 3D model to understand why we are building this model in the first place. Before I actually began building this fan, I knew that I was only going to use the 3D model to use it for renderings to create shots in order to post on social media. If I knew that I was going to actually be developing this fan, I would have worried about things such as wall thicknesses. But since this 3D model is only used for visual purposes, I actually saved a lot of time not having to think and worry about those things and only worry about the visual aspect of this 3D model. So this is important to keep in mind guys as you build any 3D model moving forward. The fan took me a couple weeks to design during the sketch and ideation phase, then about 12 hours in order to actually 3D model in SolidWorks from start to finish. If I went through every single little thing I did in order to create this fan in SolidWorks, this video would probably be about six hours long, which I know you guys would love to watch, but I just don't have the time for that. So instead, I'm actually gonna allow you guys to download my SolidWorks file of my fan concept for absolutely no cost. You can go ahead and download it, look at my 3D file on your own time where you can see every single little dimension, every single sketch, every single feature I did in order to create this. And this is all thanks to Thangs.com which is the sponsor of this video. Thangs.com is an awesome website that allows people like us designers, engineers, enthusiasts to find, download 3D models and use it in our projects. You can search by key terms or you can also upload a 3D model and Thangs will try to match the 3D geometry to any similar one that they already have on the website. Thangs.com also allows you to work with your teams by creating teams within the website. You guys can work together communicate, interact, work on 3D files, and Thangs.com would actually allow you to save multiple versions and their revisions. And once you've built up enough designs, enough 3D models, what's really cool about Thangs is you can build this profile up, uploading all of your 3D models, all of your designs, where you can share with the community. And since Thangs is such a community-based website, users can also like and comment on these 3D files where you guys can interact with each other and share great ideas. So guys, if you are interested in downloading my 3D file, go ahead and check out thangs.com. The link should be down below. Go ahead and register and you'll be able to download my model for free. If you guys take a look at to the left here, you guys can see the feature manager tree. This is gonna be all the things that I did in order to create this fan from start to finish. If you guys see here, I have 14 bodies that pretty much develop this whole fan. Popping out of SolidWorks, guys. If you are looking through my 3D file, you will be confused. I didn't plan on having anybody look through my file, so if I knew that, I probably would have built this fan in a much more organized way. But guys, although confusing, this is honestly the way I build in SolidWorks. Kinda just use this video as a guide as you're going through my 3D file. I do build in part mode. Most people, when they're designing multiple parts of a product, they are building in assembly mode, but I learned in part mode. That's how Cal State Long Beach taught me. Just want to let you guys know that before we actually get started. If you guys take a look at the very bottom here, there is this blue bar. So if we move this blue bar 
up, it's gonna go back in time before I actually even made these features. So the very first thing you guys see when I first started this fan is I used the revolve tool creating a perfect sphere. And you guys might not notice that, but my fan here is a perfect sphere because I really wanted these side walls here to be perfectly round. Also have a rough idea on how big your design product is gonna be. So how I started it off was this uh, primitive shape with a semicircle sketch about 12 inches tall. And so as I update a couple of these cuts, what I'm gonna show you guys, this fan here starts off as a perfect sphere, but then you guys can see that the face of the fan is actually flat, but it's actually flat at a slight angle. The rear of the fan is also flat, but it is flat at a perfectly vertical angle, and then the base of the fan is also flat, but with a base coming out. So you guys can see I made three cuts, and that's all according to the face, the rear, and the base like I showed you guys. So if I rotate around, you guys can probably see the fan shape roughly coming together, and all we have to do now is start to refine it and add the details. I'm gonna continue refining my rough shape by adding some fillets. Now, I don't add just normal fillets, I add what's called variable fillets. And what variable fillets are, it's gonna give you an interesting looking fillet by tapering the fillet. So if you guys notice, I have a larger fillet that's on top here in the rear, and then it tapers down to a smaller fillet. And same goes with the front. And also this fillet is an asymmetrical fillet, meaning that this top fillet here goes deeper in, and the lower side one goes a little bit higher up. So I really like using asymmetrical fillets and variable fillets to give me a very unique form. Since this thing is so round because of the fillets and just starting off with the sphere in general, what I generally like to do is also begin adding some hard lines and hard lines pretty much kind of refine the shape, giving some visual details to it where people can follow the line with their eye. And my fan concept, it's really round, but as we get to this front part here, you guys can see that there is a large chamfer that goes all the way around. Typically, I would just use the chamfer tool in order to make this chamfer here, but since we did fillet it, it removed our hard edge, and so I had to create that chamfer by using our loft tool instead of our chamfer tool. And you guys can see how I did that when you go through my file, but essentially what I did was I converted entities, this surface here, and then I cut away at our original form and then I just lofted those two together. So we're still in step one, guys, and refining our overall form, okay? So the next thing I did was I did carve away at the rear of the fan. So if we take a look at the final design, we can see that the rear is not only a different part, but it's also carved away quite a lot. So that's essentially what I did here using the cut loft tool. And then I also cut away at the base so that I can begin building that lower part, the base where the fan will be rotating on. So from this point, guys, I have now actually completed the rough overall form. Now all I have to do is add in the details in the lower base, the face of the fan, and then the rear, and also the cable. So that's what you guys are going to see next. And since the cable is connected to the base here, the fan is going to be rotating around the base. So the fan will definitely run into the cable. So what I did was I cut away at the lower part of the body of the fan so that as it rotates, it'll have clearance to where it won't run into the cable. These points here is I began building out the front face of the fan and also the cable as well. So I used this swept feature in order to build out this cable. Then I actually built out this front face right here, giving me a reference point to build out the spokes for the fan. I do want the front face to be spoky, as you guys noticed with my final rendering. So you notice that these spokes aren't completely flat. They actually curve outwards away from the body and then flatten out and then curve inwards as it reaches the center. I wanted to have some sort of a reference drawing of where I can follow this cross section using a sweep tool in order to create each, each individual spoke. But since I didn't quite have a good visualization on the shape of each spoke, that's the reason why I built out this part here. There's shape to this front surface, okay? I'm not actually gonna use this part in the final rendering. I'm just using this part as a reference. So if we take a look at the cross section of this part, this profile cross section line, essentially I just traced this edge 
edge here and I swept it creating the spoke. So we move all the way up into the swept. This is the feature that I used in order to create the very first spoke. And then I patterned it around so that obviously it would create the full 360. So the very next thing I did when continuing building out the front face was I didn't like how there was so much holes in between each spoke. And I didn't want to add more spokes because then it would start getting really tight in the center as you guys see right there. So my idea was I wanted some spokes to run just halfway down and stop about that point before it got too tight. So essentially what I did was I mirrored the very first initial spoke and then I also revolved patterned that around in order to give me these uh, center spokes that only went about halfway down. And so I think that that kind of gave me a more interesting, more intricate kind of look. So the very last thing what I'm going to show you guys with this 3D file here is how I did the rear of this fan, which is a pretty intricate cut. So essentially this is going to really slow down the 3D file and make things really, really heavy. And I'm trying to screen record at the same time while going through all of these features. So my computer is just dying right now, guys. But essentially what I did was I did a single sketch and then I patterned that sketch all the way around and then I did an extrude cut. Since we did an extrude cut on not quite a flat circle, we can see that it kind of left some opening gaps where it didn't fill in. At this point, I thought to myself, how can I figure out a way to extend all of these sketches, this cut that's below here, to extend all the way to the end? I thought that was going to be quite a lot of work and not worth the effort. What I actually did come up with, which I thought was a pretty interesting solution, was I decided to do another layer of patterning. This layer of patterning was going to be separate from the original layer, but it was also going to be quite unique in the sense that it tapered being a little bit more wider at the bottom and then tapering smaller as it went up. I thought that this solution added for a really cool visual look and kind of makes my fan a little bit more unique. Immediately after this guys, all I did was added some fillets, making everything look nice, doing what I thought I needed to do in order to make the final rendering crispy and realistic looking. And the way you do that is just by details and areas and rings and grommets and little parts that live in between parts. and when you have things like that, it'll really boost your rendering and make your 3D look super, super real. Oh, and there goes SolidWorks. All right, guys, I guess that was too much for my computer to handle. I hope you guys really learned something. Definitely download my 3D file by going to thangs.com, registering and checking out my file. You could also go ahead and check out all the other 3D files that Thangs has to offer. Again, thank you to thangs.com for sponsoring this video. Guys, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, definitely please help me out by giving a big old like button, leaving a comment down below whether it's a question for me or just saying thank you. All right, guys, if you enjoy videos like these, and you want to watch more, please hit that subscribe button. Again, guys, my name is Jimmy, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.